Hey guys, welcome back to another top 10 video. Since finishing my video on the top 10 best and top 5 worst characters, I wanted to do one a little more specific and talk about elemental skills and bursts. So either next week or the week after, you can expect to see one on bursts. For today though, we'll be discussing the top 10 elemental skills in Genshin Impact. Rating elemental skills is a whole different can of worms compared to units, since you're trying to ascertain the value of a skill isolated from the context of its owner. Because of this, there needs to be a few questions answered and a few ground rules established. First and foremost, I think this goes without saying, but for the two of you out there who need to hear this, this video is opinion based. I have my priorities, you have yours. Besides, this is less of a meta video and more of a fun ranking anyway. As you know, a character's skill and burst often have interactions with the rest of their kits, from talents to constellations, sometimes each other. When attempting to disconnect an elemental skill and evaluate it within a vacuum, are we considering the external components too, or just a skill within its own context? What about skills that can only be performed with a burst or vice versa? How are we going to judge that? For the sake of simplicity, I'm going to disregard abilities that are too intertwined with the rest of the character's moveset as a whole, and only count talents and constellations that explicitly state the ability's name in their description. On that note, since 5 star constellations are understandably more impactful, I'll only be going to C2 for 5 stars, while 4 stars will go to C6. Last but not least, I'll prioritize skills that have the best overall usability in conjunction with practicality. Again, I'm not trying to go too deep into this, as ultimately it's all in good fun. Let's not waste any more time and get started. For our first choice on the list, we have our sponsor for today, Tower of Fantasy. Haha, I got you, didn't I? Tower of Fantasy is sponsoring my channel once again to continue showcasing their version 3.7 update. In case you need a refresher on what this game is all about, it's a free-to-play shared open-world cross-platform MMORPG where you can team up with other players to fight bosses, explore the world, gear up your units, and ride special vehicles. As a special promotion for version 3.7, they're having a collaboration with Neon Genesis Evangelion, which has been going on for the better part of this month already. Having just released Asuka as a playable character last week, this week they're also making Rei playable as well, who in my opinion is a better waifu and I'll fight you if you think otherwise. Rei will be available starting March 28th, in other words today. Alongside our release, new Simulacra missions, and more importantly, the Mecha Simulation Raid will be made available for you to test the two characters out on, both of which offering an extensive selection of rewards upon completion. Also, something extra they're including with Rei is their Futures Echo skin, which you can get from now until April 3rd. For returning players, this is a great opportunity to get back to the game, as they're offering a limited order reissue where you have the chance to acquire all the characters you missed out on, and they'll help you work on them with another round of supply runs and collaboration events. Use my link on screen which is also in the description to check out the new stuff. Thanks again to Tower of Fantasy for sponsoring the video, but for now let's talk about the actual list. Kicking off the list, and as per usual this is in no particular order, we have Farina Salon Solitaire. This is easily one of the best elemental skills when it comes to off-field damage and application, which is the main distinction to make between hers and the likes of Shintil and Yelans, that it's an elemental skill. She summons three bubble companions that follow the active character, dealing hydro damage to anything that moves, with each one draining the party's max health to empower their attacks. The Seahorse attacks the fastest but has the lowest power, followed by the Octopus who's sort of in the middle, and the Crab who's the slowest but hits like a truck. The application is passable enough for Salon Solitaire to provide you with most if not all of your Hydro needs for teams such as Hyper Bloom or Taser, and while the HP drain may be inconvenient, it's more than worth it given the sheer damage output Freena's skill has. Best of all is that it has a 30 second duration but a 20 second cooldown, giving an overflow of time, so you'll never have to worry about timing or rotations when using this. With Farina's A4 talent, she can boost the DPS of Salon Solitaire even further and of course, elemental skills have the privilege of capitalizing on the Golden Troop set for even more damage. The one downside is that you will be stuck with the Usia version on account of not having access to Farina's charge attack, but that's hardly an inconvenience as most if not all the time you'll prefer that one anyway, easily deserving of a spot on this list. Next skill will be Fischl's Night Rider. If everyone calls Bennett a walking elemental burst, Fischl is most certainly a walking elemental skill. The sole reason putting her in contention for the strongest Electro unit in the game is because of her trusty familiar, Oss. Remaining in position upon summon, he repeatedly strikes nearby opponents once per second for Electro damage in a small AoE, simultaneously generating two-thirds of an elemental particle for consistent battery. On its own, it doesn't seem all that impressive, but Knight Rider has a few supplementary components that really add to his strength. Official A4 passive as Oz deal follow-up electro damage whenever an electro-based reaction is triggered, essentially reapplying electro to that target. What's special about this passive is that there's no internal cooldown attached to it, giving Fischl bar none the highest electro application in all of Genshin. And the damage isn't half bad either. But wait, there's more. At C6, Oz gets to stay on field for 2 seconds longer and deals 30% of Fischl's attack as follow-up electro damage. If you remember, Oz generates energy with each attack, so this is damage, uptime, and battery all in one. The obvious downside is that you won't be able to extend Knight Rider since you won't have Fischl's Burst along with it, but 12 seconds should be more than enough to obliterate any group of enemies in the game. Worst case scenario, you can always compensate with a sacrificial bow. 
Next skill will be Shinobu's sanctifying ring. Like Fischl, almost the entirety of Shinobu's value is housed in a skill, making it an easy choice. At the cost of some help, she creates a ring following the active character that pulsates for electro damage every second and a half that also heals the active character for a fair amount. At a 12 second duration and 15 second cooldown, the uptime is pretty good and can accommodate for longer rotations as opposed to an 8 or even 10 second skill. But if you have Constellation 2, the duration matches the cooldown, letting you refresh it right when it wears off. This is effective mostly for Dendro teams, not so much over Vape and Taser, but you really can't go wrong with a skill that provides healing and consistent electro application. It is rare to find an elemental skill that heals and follows you around with permanent uptime. Usually that's attached to elemental bursts, and even then they're few and far between. Shinobu's second pass to town increases both the healing and damage based on her elemental mastery, which is a nice touch, adding a layer of hybrid scaling to a character who was already incentivized to build DM anyway. Between Fischl and Shinobu, the former is the more offensive one while the latter is more well-rounded. Next skill, and this should come as no surprise to anyone, would be Hu Tao's Guide to Afterlife. If we go by the time she was released, this was by far the most powerful elemental skill the Genshin community has ever laid eyes on. With a 9 second duration and a 16 second cooldown, it's kind of stingy duration wise. I wish it lasted for 2 or 3 seconds more, but I completely understand why it's kept at only 9, as Hu Tao converts a portion of her max health into bonus attack. With sufficiently high base HP, you're staring at easily over 2000 attack. It's twice the strength of Bennett's elemental burst that you can activate at the press of a button. Then it converts your charge attack to activate instantly, imbues you with pyro, and applies a debuff to opponents hit by said charge attack for a chunk of damage every 4 seconds. Constellation 1 lets you perform charge attacks at no cost of stamina, and with the first passive talent there's even some party utility, to the tune of 12% bonus good rate for 8 seconds, which can somewhat make up for the 7 second downtime while you switch between the rest of your party members to reactivate buffs. In terms of raw power, Hu Tao's skill has to be the best of its kind. I still can't believe this chick was released in 1.3. Moving on, we have Raiden Shulgrin's Transcendence Baleful Omen, a very long-lasting skill with a cooldown less than half of the duration, ensuring more uptime than you physically know what to do with. Whenever you deal damage to opponents, an additional electro attack will follow soon after for a fair bit of damage. While this ensures consistent electro application for things like Hyper Bloom, although not really for Taser or Quicken since you need far more application, the real cherry on top with this ability is, of course, the elemental burst damage increase. With this effect, everyone's burst damage increases based on 30% of the cost of the attack. So hypothetically, if you have a burst that has a 100 energy cost, that's 30% more damage added to their burst, which is an incredible buff to have on a burst, much less a skill, especially in tandem with the consistent follow-up damage. Unfortunately, none of her talents or constellations expressly include her skill in their descriptions, so you do miss out on things like the electro damage bonus from A4, but in practice, I still consider this one of the best skills in the game for the sheer fact that it's one of those abilities you don't have to think about. It is the most generous duration relative to the cooldown, so you'll basically never have to worry about accidentally using your combos after it expires. If you run a team of all burst attackers, for instance her iconic national team, you get so much mileage out of her skill. I would not mind having this extracted out of her kit. Next one's gonna be Kasaha's Chihayaburu, which if you didn't know, is translated into a thousand of swords. Little bit of etymology for you. Anyways, this might be a more controversial choice, but I chose this less for the sheer impact and more for the convenience. Kazuha's skill has him briefly jump or launch himself upwards depending on whether you tap or hold the skill, creating a vortex that launches and draws enemies caught towards the center of the attack, which you can then follow up with an empowered plunging attack that comes with elemental absorption. It's a fairly strong one at that. The first ascension passive deals 200% of Kasuha's attack as damage corresponding to the absorbed element, and being a plunging attack it counts as a heavy attack, meaning it can deal significant damage to both material and elemental shields. Additionally, you can cast this wall in the air for more verticality. This includes wall gliding. Granted, you do miss out on that critical elemental damage bonus from his A4, diminishing the combat pressure of the skill by a significant margin, but in terms of traversability, crowd control, not to mention having a respectably short cooldown when you add Z1 to it, it's still a great skill in overall convenience. I feel like people underestimate crowd control unless it's something extreme like Venti's ultimate, but Kasuha's skill is the heartbeat of his kit even without his A4. Besides, this is my list, and Kasuha is one of my favorite characters to use in the overworld and in battle. This next one will definitely, absolutely not be controversial. I might consider this the single most powerful elemental skill in Genshin Impact because literally everyone would want this as a spare elemental skill. Zhongli's Dominus Lapidus. This. This mother f This thing single-handedly annihilated any semblance of difficulty in Genshin for like the first two and a half years. I remember when people were talking about how oh the corrosion dot damage can burn through shields. Little did they know corrosion takes like 5 years to kill you from 100 to 0. It's only a threat when you're taking damage at the same time, but you're not losing a single point of health with a 20k plus HP shield. A staggering HP scaling of 23% plus a base of 2700 that's basically multiplied by 1.5 times with the universal damage mitigation. This is without question the most powerful shield in the game. 
Adding on to that, the shield gets even more resilient, gaining 5% shield strength every time it gets hit. When you pair this up with the natural invincibility frames afforded to virtually all elemental bursts, you'll seldom if ever encounter a situation where the shield breaks before you can refresh it. Speaking of which, like all other Archons, Zhongli's skill has permanent uptime, a 20 second shield duration and a 12 second cooldown, so every 12 seconds, you get a 5 figure shield value that also comes equipped with the 20% elemental and physical resistance shred to nearby enemies, essentially increasing your damage output by 25%. In the overworld, you can enjoy the instant mining effect of the whole skill and the many penis strokes you can make with the stone pillars. That's the real selling point of the ability, let's be real here. But in all seriousness, Zhongli's skill is excellent. It's a shame you can't get a second one from a C2 as that's attached to his burst, but realistically with the sufficiently built Zhongli, you don't need to have two shields up. It makes your team practically invincible, gives super armor by virtue of being a shield, increases your team's damage no matter what type of element they are, and even offers a bit of geo damage on the side. If I ordered this list, this would most definitely be number one. Three more to go, let's wrap this up. Next skill will be Yaimiko's Yakan Evocation Seshou Sakura. I like this skill because it's another one of those always there type abilities. A small dash that spawns a totem behind it, periodically dealing electro damage to a nearby enemy. For each one that's on the field, the other ones get stronger too, with a maximum of 3 being available. Each totem has an individual duration of 14 seconds and a recharge timer of 4, letting you reposition them whenever you need to. The DPS and coverage of this skill is nothing to scoff at, especially when all three are trained on a single target. You can further increase that damage with Elemental Mastery thanks to her A4, and with C2 they can upgrade to level 4 and get 60% bonus attack range, making for an incredibly powerful skill. Most of the time, Miko's skill is the heartbeat of her kit, with some choosing to ignore the usage of her burst altogether. Like I said, the damage of this attack is exquisite when all three are attacking the same opponent, and has just enough application to make her a decent choice for Taser and Quicken. Admittedly, it can be tedious to reposition them against opponents that move all over the place, but with C2's increased attack radius, that does alleviate things a bit. Also, I'm aware there are 4 Electro characters on this list. No, I am not biased. The Electro element has quite a few powerful skills, what can I say? Second to last one will be Nahida's All Schemes to Know. Initially, I was torn on whether to include this, given a huge portion of its effectiveness is derived from Lucy Heart's various empowerments, but after thinking about it for a while, I'd say it still merits a spot on this list. When damaging enemies either with the tap or hold variant, up to 8 enemies get marked and tethered to one another, during which if any elemental reaction is triggered on said target so they're struck by a dendro core, all marked enemies take dendro damage, subsequently reapplying dendro onto them for what is essentially permanent dendro application. The trigger interval can only occur once every 2.5 seconds, but realistically that's all you need for any dendro reaction that isn't spread. Like I said before, a significant amount of the actual threat of this attack is housed in her ultimate, which you won't have, however that doesn't entirely negate the usefulness of Nahida's skill. As with her Archon peers, her skill has overflow of time, having a minuscule cooldown of 5 or 6 seconds, but a mark duration of 25, enabling you to easily maintain this effect on bosses without concern, and letting you apply it to new enemies that join the fight. With the massive cast range to boot, she's a one-stop shop for all your dendro needs. Conveniently, it comes with the added benefit of letting you acquire harvestable items from a distance. I should also mention that her A4 can further increase the damage of her skill based on elemental mastery, and her C2 enables dendro reactions to break enemy defense and critically strike. So even without illusory heart in effect, Nahida is bar none the best at what she does. Last but not least, we have Yelan's Lingering Lifeline, another skill that coincidentally happens to be used for traversability, but with more combat-oriented benefits to it. When cast, she breaks into a sprint that tethers nearby enemies, blowing them all up with big hydro damage at the end of it and knocking them towards her. Yelan's skill is mobility, damage, and crowd control all in one. Best of all, she can get two of them with her first constellation. A few things to make note of is that on top of Lingering Lifeline being faster than a sprint, unlike Sayu's skill, it also regenerates your stamina during that time, allowing for Yelan to basically sprint infinitely, especially with two charges of it. The damage is also excellent. Hydro isn't really known for one-shot nuking unless your name is Mona, but with a 40% HP scaling at rank 10 and a fairly short cooldown of 10 seconds, Yelan's skill adds respectable damage to your team. Although of course, everyone knows the real source of her pressure is her burst, but that's for the burst video. In combat, the fast activation of the tap version can lend itself to quick swap teams, generating a good amount of energy in the process. I find myself swapping to Yelan just to use her skill for battery, even for non-hydro characters. 40% HP scaling for a single attack is extremely strong combined with all the other benefits to it. It's not the best, mind you, but one of those abilities you can never go wrong with. Okay, that concludes my list. What do you guys think? Were you expecting to see these characters, or did you hope I would include someone else? Skills are not as easy to judge in value compared to bursts, it really comes down to what you prefer. Damage, support, even non-combat benefits. There were a few skills I'm sure you'll be asking about like Wanderer, Ayato, Child, Xianyun, Kokomi, Nabia, and such, but I like to think the ones I made here are acceptable for many of you. Maybe Kazuha will be a head-scratcher for some. If you want, feel free to share your own list down in the comments. 
For now, if you enjoyed the video, it would be great if you could leave a like and subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Varsfam, join my Discord server, and stay tuned for my Elemental Burst video coming out either next week or the week after. But till next time, thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.